Now you can also run Dynamips routers on the GNS3 VM. Now I've had problems using my image with the GNS3 appliances listed here. So what I'm gonna do is go to Edit Preferences, go to iOS AV routers and click New. But in this case, I'm gonna run the appliance on the GNS3 VM. My previous 3725 is running on the local server, the desktop server. This name may be different on your device. It's essentially the name of your PC. But in this case, I'm gonna run the iOS Dynamips router on the GNS3 VM and click Next. It's picked up the existing image that I'm using. If you don't have an image, click New Image and browse to where you've got the image in your downloads directory and then decompress it and upload it to the GNS3 VM. So in this example, it's being uploaded to the GNS3 VM. I'm gonna click Next. I'm gonna change the name of this device to C3725 VM and click Next. This device requires 256 meg of RAM. See my previous videos discussing requirements for a device. If you're not sure why I'm changing that, you essentially need to click this link and look at the minimum requirements for the image that you're using. Click Next. I'm gonna add some modules to this device add some WIC cards, this is dependent on your device, click Next. Idle PC value has been found, click Finish and click OK. So now under Routers, Installed Appliances, I have this C3725 VM device, which I can add to the topology and integrate with the viral routers. So I'll start up this iOS V router and open up a console to the device. It's now booting up. I'll change the appearance of PuTTY so that we can see what's going on. And as you can see, the device is now booting up. Now again, because I'm using nested virtualization here, as in I'm recording this on my Mac, but I'm running a Windows VM, and then running the GNS3 VM within that Windows VM, it takes a longer time to boot up than it would if you were running this directly on your PC. But there you go. So I'm gonna call this Dynamips router one. Interface that's being used here is Fast Ethernet 00. So interface, so interface F0 slash zero, no shut. IP address 10.1.2.2, I'll specify in this example. So show IP interface brief. There's the IP address of the Dynamips router. Now it doesn't have the same requirements as a iOS V router. So in my example, it's running a lot quicker than this iOS V router. But on the iOS V router, if I go onto interface gigabit 01 and no shut the interface, and configure an IP address of 10.1.2.1, I should be able to ping from the Dynamips router to the iOS V router. So back on my Dynamips router, can I ping the iOS V router? Yes, I can. Now, if I wanted to exchange routes, I would need to run a routing protocol. So in this example, I'll simply run EIGRP on the routers. So on iOS V router one, I'll enable EIGRP as well. I'm enabling EIGRP on all interfaces, just to keep things simple. And I should actually use the same autonomous system number. So no router EIGRP1 should be router EIGRP100 network. And I'll enable EIGRP in all interfaces. 
And as you can see on the Dynamips router, a neighbor relationship has been established. So I've got a neighbor relationship from router one as seen over here to iOS v router one as seen over here. And then on iOS v router two, router eijrp100 network, and I'll enable eijrp on all interfaces. So what should happen if it's done right is I should have learned routes through eijrp, which I have. I should also be able to ping both IP addresses on this segment, which I can. So Dynamips router one is able to ping both iOS v router one using that IP address and iOS v router two using that IP address. So in these videos, I've now shown you how to download and integrate the GNS3 VM with the GNS3 GUI and how to build multiple topologies consisting of different devices. I've shown you VPCS. I've shown you the GNS3 Ethernet switch. I've shown you Dynamips routers, and I've shown you iOS V routers. Now, many appliances are supported in GNS3. Have a look at the available appliances for various appliance types to see the different types of devices that you can run in your GNS3 topologies. The capability of GNS3 has been extended dramatically in the last few years. You can run very large topologies. You can run multi-vendor topologies. You can run complex topologies in GNS3. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wanna wish you all the very best.